Hello everyone. A warm welcome to all. Myself, Dr. S. Bhagishri, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering, University College of Engineering, Jindakal, Tamil Nadu. I am here to present to you about the introduction of deregulation in electric power system. The power and energy are the buzzwords in today's world. Electricity is emerged as a basic necessity with food, shelter, clothing for human beings. Life without electricity has become highly unimaginable. Electric locomotives, heating, cooling fans, blowers, motors are some of the applications that converts electrical energy into useful work. Nowadays, the progress of any nation is measured in terms of per capita consumption of electrical energy. That is, the kilowatt hour consumed per person per year. And in India, approximately the power utilized by a person per year is 500 kilowatt hour. First, we will see the basic structure of power system. The power system constitutes generation system, transmission system and the distribution system. The power is generated from the generating station and it is transmitted then distributed through the transmission and distribution system respectively. The transmission system has primary transmission and secondary transmission system has its category. Same way, the distribution also owns its primary and secondary distribution. The categorization are based on the voltage levels of the system. As we discussed earlier, the classification of the power system transmission based on the voltage levels. The figure shows the structure of power system with voltage levels. 11 kV will be generating from the generating station and it is then transmitted to the primary transmission system and there the voltage will be stepped up by a value of 220 kV from 11 kV. Then it is transmitted through the towers and reaches the secondary transmission substation there the voltage level will be stepped down to a value of 33 kV. And from there, it is transmitted to the distribution station, that is a primary distribution station. There, the 33 kV will be stepped down to a voltage of 6.6 kV and that voltage will be given to the primary distribution system, that is the industry like consumers and then it is further transferred to the, the secondary distribution station and there, that 6.6 kV will be further stepped down to a voltage of further stepped down to a voltage of 400 volts or 230 volts for the end user customers now we will discuss about the conventional method of power delivery to the consumers the traditional power system are being known as vertical integrated utility system in this type of structure, one utility handles all the functions of generation, transmission and distribution within a certain area. Since all the functions are controllable by a system operator and hence the operation and coordination of such a system is somewhat simple. The objective of the system is to provide the quality of power to the consumer, although ensuring reliability and overall economy. The power, the power price was regulated and based on the actual cost incurred. The best example for this scenario is the state electricity boards in India. The vertical integrated utility system is shown in the figure here. In that, the blocked line shows the energy flow, then the board line shows the information flow and the dotted line shows the money flow. First, we will see the energy transfer. The generator power is transmitted from the generating station to the distribution system. Uh, to the distribution and uh, transmission and distribution system then to the consumers. The information will only be flow between the generation and transmission system and, uh, and the money transfer from the consumers to the company which owns the system and there will be no information transfer transfer between consumer generation or transmission system. Characteristics of traditionally vertically inter integrated utility system. The characteristics are they are monopoly in structure, 
their service towards the consumer and the roles and responsibilities. We will see one by one. Only the local electric utility can produce power, move or sell the commercial electric power within its uh, service terrain since there will be no power producer. Then above their service, the utility must provide service to all the consumers in its service territory and not just those that would be profitable. The roles and responsibilities, the utilities, business and operating practices must conform to guidelines and rules set by the government regulators. The utilities rates are set in accordance with the government regulatory rules and guidelines. The utility is assured a fair return on its investment if it conforms to a regulatory guidelines and practices. I think now you all understand the concept of vertical integrated system. Let us have a reflection question on this discussion. What could be the drawbacks of vertical integrated utility that is the traditional method of power flow flow following in India? You please pause the video and think over the app question for a while and play again. I hope that now you all think of the answers. Let me discuss the drawbacks of vertical integrated utility cost customer service and privatization let us see one by one since there are no competition for them they only fix their cost and also only the local electrical utility can have the holes to sell the power within this region since they have numerous consumers they fail to service all of them in time the utility business and operating practices must conform to the guidelines and rules set by the government regulator. For these reasons, the people would like to go for the deregulated power system. Let us see the structure of deregulated power system. The identification and separation of the various tasks which are normally carried out in the traditional organization so that these tasks can be open to competition whenever practical and profitable this is nothing but unbundling the purpose of the regulation is to restructure the electric industry so that the power production and retail sales are competitive while delivery is still the regulated one the blocked line shows the energy flow then the bold line shows the information flow and the dotted line shows the money flow in the structure we can understand from the structure is that iso is a iso that is the independent system operator will look over the power exchanges between the power system identities it supervises all the operation in the structure different power cell sellers will deliver their product to their customers via common set of T and D wires. Hence, the people have the freedom to buy the required power from any of the power producer through the supervision of ISO at their convenient price. As the figure shows that the independent system operator has the information flow from the generation system, transmission system and with the retailer and with the customers. Next, we will see how the pricing is taken place in the deregulated system. The electricity price gets segregated into price of electricity and the price of energy delivered and the price of other services. The price of electrical energy is nothing but the cost incurred in generating the demanded power. Next is wheeling charges. That is the cost for transmitting and distributing the claimed power. And the last one is the cost of a compensator used to regulate the power demanded. The different identities of deregulated power systems are Gencos, Transcos, Discos, Riscos, Consumers and ISO. The Genco is nothing but a generation company. It is an owner operator of one or more generators that runs them and bids the power into the competitive marketplace. Genco sells energy at its site in the same manner that a coal mining company might sell a coal in bulk at its mine. Then transmission company. Transco 
moves power in bulk quantities from where it is produced to where it is delivered. The Transco owns and maintains the transmission facilities and may perform many of the management and engineering functions required to ensure the system can continue to do its job. In most deregulated industry structures, the Transco owns and maintains the transmission lines under monopoly franchise but does not necessarily operate them. That is done by independent system operator. The Transco is paid for the use of its line. In some countries, Transco itself acts as a system operator. Then, distribution company, Disco, it is a monopoly franchise owner operator of the local power delivery system which delivers power to individual business and homeowners. In some places, the local distribution function is combined with the retail function that is to buy wholesale electricity either through the spot market or through the direct contacts with Genco's and supply electricity to the end user customer. In many other cases, however, the Disco does not sell power. It only owns and operates the local distribution system and obtains in review revenue by renting space on it or billing for delivery of electric bill. Then, Rescos. Rescos is nothing but retail energy service company. It is the retailer of electric power. Many of this will be the retail department of the former electrical integrated utility system. Others will be the companies new to the electrical industry that believe they are good at selling service. Either way, a Resco buys power from the Genco's and sells it directly to the consumers. ISO The ISO is an entity interested with the responsibility of ensuring the reliability and security of the entire system. It is an independent authority and does not participate in the electricity market trade. It usually does not own generating resources except for some reserve capacity in certain cases. In order to maintain the system security and reliability, the ISO procures various services such as supply of emergency reserves or reactive power from other identities system. Next, consumers. Consumers is an identity consuming electrical energy from the system. In regulated market, in deregulated market, a customer has several options for buying electricity. It may choose to buy electricity from the spot market by bidding for purchase or may buy directly from a Genco or even from the local distribution company. I hope that you all now understand what is the basic of deregulated power system. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for listening. Thank you.